Hello and welcome to the first ever Creative Filming Club podcast here at the University of Kentucky. Each episode, we will talk about everything under the sun from movies and pop cultures to school and food. Expect an ever-changing cast each week to provide entertaining commentary. But for this week, I'm Adam. I'm Max, and I am co-president of CFC. I'm Sam, and I am vice president of CFC. Well, this is our first podcast, guys. How are you feeling? I'm a bit nervous. I've never had to, like, talk forcefully talk like this before <laughs> it's interesting but well, the door's over there you can leave later. okay bye <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. i'm excited to try out a new entertainment medium because i've had quite a bit of experience now in film um but i've never done anything like audio based so i'm excited for this well, it'll be a good experience for all of us mm -hmm. yeah. so this is our first <clears throat> podcast and each week we're going to have different members of the creative filming club on i'm a kind of general member i kind of do a little bit of everything and i'm now the host of this podcast we have Max. Yeah, I'm just basically co- uh, I am basically co-president. The story is that, um, well, Elise, our founder, had to go on some interview internship things. So Matt and I, the other co-president, just took over. And now we're just, like, leaving the club for the semester and probably for future years. I am vice president, so I am one step under Matt and Max. But um, <laughs> I'm very involved with scheduling of meetings and running meetings and things like that. We all sort of just work as a team, so it's been a really great experience. Yeah, we're pretty much like a big like triad council thing. It's like we're always working together. Um, we try to provide a lot of activities for the club, not just film, but like club bonding activities. It's really fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun being in this club. We just uh, put out our first trailer for the new movie. Yeah, it's Loth. Um, what are friends for? It's really interesting. I'm pretty sure Sam has more to talk about that because she's the one who wrote it. Wrote it. You know? um, yeah, what are friends for? Sort of the main writers on that were myself and Matt, who is also co-president. And I like to describe it as sort of a psychological thriller. I don't want to say too much about it because I think that it's something you sort of have to experience for yourself. But the themes that we were sort of trying to write into it were how do you confront your personal demons and how do you find light in situations that seem very dire? That's cool. You can find that trailer at CFC Podcast. No, not CFC Podcast. What's our YouTube? Um, at Creative Filming Club. It's just that's just pretty much it. That's what our username is on YouTube. Um, if yeah. you like see us on Facebook, it's pretty much posted everywhere now for the next few days or so. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's also on our Twitter page at UKYCFC. If you want to check that out and give us a follow. Shameless advertising. It's okay. It's our podcast. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, like, how'd you guys get into like filming and stuff? Like, oh, that just came from I don't know. Like, in high school, like, um, let's see, senior year, my friends and I decided to have like a one last year vlogging thing, and I'm the one who's usually with the camera or editing it, and then now it kind of exploded to this in short story terms. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, I always sort of knew that filming was something I was really interested in because my older brother majored in film at Grand Valley back in Michigan, but my parents were very sort of major in science, don't really major in film, so I found this club as a way to express my creative outlets instead of majoring in something like that, but um, I think Creative Filming Club as a whole has definitely given me a very comprehensive understanding of film, perhaps even more than a major would have because for me, when I'm required to do something by class, I'm going to end up not wanting to do it. So I think it's better for me with this club that I get to really explore all aspects of film and do what I like to do instead of getting an assignment. Oh, funny thing. I was about to add a minor to the media arts and studies in UK, but I also work in um, the Media Depot and they said not to take up that minor because I would learn a lot more on like being on set with like the club or even like just working at the depot. That's where I work here. Yeah, so, yeah, I looked at that minor, too, and I'm just like, I can't fit it in my schedule in any way possible. So. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, across the other side of campus. It's, like, I'm a kinesiology major, if you guys don't know, and it's at, like, south end, while, like, media arts is, like, the northern end, and I just don't want to make that walk all day. It sucks, though, because there's a couple classes, like, Photoshop class and editing class that are just for majors. Yeah, it sucks, because, like, I've always wanted to, like, learn how to use digital media, but um, I ended up, like just learning on my own and that's how I became so familiar with our editing software with Adobe Premiere Pro and now I'm starting to get into After Effects which is fun stuff yeah all right well I guess we're gonna mm -hmm. have to talk about the 
elephant in the room, the Oscars this weekend. <sighs> oh, boy. I did not watch the Oscars, but I heard a lot of things. It's like Miss Universe Philippines all over, the, all over again. It's like... <sighs> Suicide yeah, Squad I just, won an Oscar. Just want to point that out. That was the most disappointing thing I have ever heard. I mean, it is a very pretty movie. That's that's all I can say. But in terms of plot, there are so many things that they cut out, unfortunately. They could have... I don't know. Maybe if they had a director's cut, it would probably be ten times better, in my opinion. See, I think that if it won for hair and makeup, I feel like that's well-deserved. I haven't personally seen Suicide Squad or any of the other films that were nominated, but I remember just from the trailers, the makeup did look really amazing. And I think makeup and hair is something that's really often underrated, honestly, in the film industry because so much goes into it and you don't realize. Um, you People spend hours and hours before they even step in front of a camera getting ready. And here's a shout out to all those makeup and hairstylists out there because their jobs are really hard. I think it's one of those things you kind of like just take for granted because you see it every day. Yeah, and it's absolutely. Like, you know, you just really have to look for the good stuff, but mm-hmm. it's definitely worth it. I mean. Yeah. Um, but La La Land, though, guys, like... Best picture. <laughs> That's really funny. For like two seconds. Oh, for but... two seconds. I mean, I've heard they're really cool about it, though. Like, I don't know. I think it was just Emma Stone winning Best Actress representing La La Land, but they accidentally said La La Land for Best Picture or something like that. And it's sad. They had, like, their whole speech and everything, but they're like, ha, ah, JK. Yeah, I was looking. I was. I can't remember where, what I was reading or watching. They were talking about how, like, the system they do to get the envelopes on stage and how, like, mm-hmm. there's several people that each of them have to have the envelope and, like, somewhere along the line, like, someone was taking a photo or something and handed the wrong one to the announcer. Yeah, that must be really awkward. I mean, it happens, like, Steve Harvey and his Miss Universe thing. Yeah, what I thought was interesting about the whole thing was that this was actually an unprecedented incident in all of the Oscars. They have never announced the wrong winner at the Oscars before, so I just thought that it was, with all of the modern technology that we have today, and we got slipped up by an envelope, and I think that's kind of funny. I think it's kind of nice, though. I mean, it's definitely, you know, award shows are kind of dying out, it seems like, because everyone's just like, we know what the good stuff is now because of social media. So Mm -hmm, So I think having a, a flub makes it more notable. Yeah, and that I'm... could be an interesting conspiracy theory that the Oscars did this for promotion that I just thought of right now when you said that. Just uh, for popularity? I mean, the whole Miss Universe thing already happened, so they're probably just doing a spinoff of that, too. Um, also, like, I don't know. It's interesting because I guess you can see that, like, even with TV shows, there there can be mess ups. So I don't know. I don't. I, yeah. <laughs> next year every award show has some form of mess up Mm -hmm. but yeah so like not all tv shows are perfect even especially live ones as well so i don't know that's my thought i will laugh if like at the grammys or something they're like they play the wrong voice track like the voice sync track and it's just oh god you know here's adele singing what was it like one direction or something oh dear like mariah carey (laughs) in the new year's um concert that was sad i felt so bad for her i mean like she said one of those um she was going to sing one of these songs but i guess they played the wrong track and she was just kind of standing there like yeah you just get in the moment it's just like you're expecting one thing you have a million eyes on you you just like it's hard to yeah i understand the whole pressure it's interesting but yeah but yeah actually all of us uh recently saw all like going back on topic we actually all just saw all land what a couple days ago yeah it was another like club bonding activity yeah recently this semester with the club actually we've gotten into weekly movie nights which is really nice we've never done that before um but this has been a really nice opportunity for us to watch a movie and sort of discuss it not in necessarily a formal setting but i know me personally i just watch movies alone and then i'll go talk about it on social media but i never really have anyone talking back to me so it's really nice to have all my friends there and we can discuss what we just saw and also it's really nice to be with people that also admire things like the cinematography and how different shots are set up because I don't have a lot of friends that would be interested in that outside of this club so it's a really cool experience watching movies with them. Speaking of cinematography, La La Land was especially very pretty like even the lighting. No spoilers it's still a little bit yeah, too soon for don't worry. Just making sure. Oh, just yeah. say, don't worry about it. I'm just going to say, like, the lighting and coloring is really nice. Um, just that whole setup. Um, there were just a bunch of shots, a lot of slider shots that I really liked. Um, 
as for plot, I can't really say much because spoilers, but the ending, <sighs> sad face. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I was actually the opposite. I like I saw as soon as the ending started. I mean, I kind of knew. I kind of knew that was gonna happen, but it's like one of those things right, that gonna, you like, know. We're going a little just, bit too close. Okay, all right. too close. All right. Yeah, all right. So. <laughs> Yeah, back on, like, cinematography, I really liked how they used, like, color so well, especially with all the clothing and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. each dress for each character was basically a different color in every scene. Yeah, and yeah. I like how it's very distinct as well. Yeah, I like their nod back to Technicolor in at the beginning of the movie because in my intro to film class, I actually was learning about Technicolor and how it was a technology that they would get the the tape, I guess, for the film, and then it would paint over it. That's why movies like North by Northwest almost don't look real because the coloring seems really off to us because we're used to HD. Um, I thought it was really cool that La La Land did a nice nod back to all of those super bright colors, but obviously it looks really crisp and it looks really awesome still because we have that modern technology. Is Technicolor where they paint on the cell? Or yes, is, okay. they paint on the cell for Technicolor. What, again, in my intro to film class, it's really awesome. I just took a midterm for it today and it was the most fun I've ever had taking a midterm because I just got to sort of show my knowledge about film from both this club and from being in the class. So that was really fun. That's cool. Mm -hmm. running going on topics here um see i know we're about we're coming up on summer is like any summer movies you guys are looking forward to Lo like i know uh, it's not a summer movie but like logan comes out this week summer mm -hmm. movies hmm i am not updated with any movies unfortunately like i don't have a tv in my apartment and i don't have enough time to like look at stuff either <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'll be definitely busy over summer so yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Logan. It comes out this week. And then uh, the new Beauty and the Beast. I'm mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, looks... I kind of want to check it out just because, like, I know Disney live action movies are on the rise now because I guess right now they're just making a ton of money. Um, but especially Beauty and the Beast, I kind of grew up with, like, Belle and, like, Cinderella and stuff. And I want to see how, how they made beast or how he looks or just the cgi in general as well as the other like inanimate objects that come to life yeah i hope it's just not a straight rehashing of the animation story mm -hmm. yeah i hope so too one thing that i'm excited about this isn't film strictly but i think a really interesting discussion is how tv is how tv is becoming more cinematic as an art form also like you can look at beauty and the beast which is coming out soon but you can also look at a tv show like once upon a time that shows a lot of very similar plot lines to that and just admire the cinematography and the costuming and the makeup that everything is just done so masterfully. And I think it's cool to think about how TV and film are sort of overlapping as an art form. What do you I think guys that's think? a lot of the way how like it's so much like, you know, you don't have to go to a movie theater now to watch a movie. Like you mm -hmm. can get a TV show and a movie like right next to each other mm -hmm. on like your computer screen. So I think like the, I guess the money difference now is not, is coming down. Like, each one can have a same, like, the high ceiling so they can spend money on TV mm -hmm. shows. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But let's see, huh? So, another movie that's coming out is uh, Alien Covenant. Oh. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the, with the Alien franchise, unfortunately. I've always wanted to see Alien, but I have just never gotten around to it. Another movie, incidentally, that I have always wanted to see but just never gotten around to is Die Hard. But I finally got to watch Die Hard for my film class, and I absolutely loved it. Because I have this thing where I really love films and TVs that have TV shows that have hostage situations. I don't know why I love them so much. I just find those plot lines so fascinating. She has a thing for kidnapping, guys. It's just not like... even kidnapping at this point, though. I just love just media that portrays being trapped. I don't know why I love it so much, but I just find it really fascinating. Yeah, but Die Hard's definitely the best Christmas movie ever. Oh, Yeah. It's a Christmas movie. And the movie? best Valentine's it Day takes, movie. There's a Christmas tree in it, and it takes place on Christmas oh, Eve. Oh, wow. So it's a I kind of want to watch this now. The yeah, there's a ton of films that I don't know, which is kind of ironic as a club president. But, um, yeah, I like to do them, but I should definitely get more into watching the films and, like, observe how they how they do the shots and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, one film you guys, like, I'm personally really excited for, but, like, no one here is probably going to know is Your Name. The animated movie. Your it's, name? It's an anime mm -hmm. movie. It's like. I'll highest, probably figure it out later. Yeah. Yeah, super hot. It's supposed to be like, it's finally coming to America after like eight months, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. it's af by my favorite director, Makoto Shinkai. He just like, he has like such a way with time in each movie. He's like, I've never seen someone just like masterfully control like the pacing of a movie like he does. 
Mm, and so I'm like, that's I'm awesome. So I'm like probably gonna like skip school that day and go find a theater somewhere. But oh, it's coming! It's coming out in theaters. I thought it would be like online or something. Yeah, this club, Adam actually was the one who introduced me to my first ever anime movie. It was. What was it? Princess Prince- Mononoke. Yeah, Princess Mononoke was the first anime movie that I ever watched in my life with this club. And I guess that's just one example, honestly, of all the firsts that I've had with this club. It's just yeah, really like... Yeah, especially like this semester too. We're, like what I mentioned earlier, we're starting to do more club bonding activities. So even last week, um, a friend and I, Zach, decided to like plan on an adventure with um, CFC. We went on like a kidnapping game thing and then we went on an adventure to one of the hiking trails it's not really much of a hiking trail and then um we played capture the flag in the park it's like really adorable and i definitely would like to plan out some more things with them it's a great interesting bonding experience we should definitely like reserve stuff next time because we were just kind of like we were just kind of like doing it on the fly yeah but um hopefully i don't know well by this semester we won't have yeah i was thinking about going to like an amusement park one day but it's not gonna be open by the time um like during the semester so there's a lot of things that i'm thinking about right now but yeah um what else what other bonding things we do movie nights like what sam said earlier um basically what happens we um, have this number generator and everyone just like chooses a number and whoever gets the closest one or like the exact number gets to choose a movie for that night yeah Do but see- sometimes at movie nights we actually don't ever get to the movie because our club at least me personally really likes to play this game called psychiatrist which is really fun we send someone out of the room and when they come back in everyone's speaking in a different code and that one person has to figure it out and it's just Only honestly two people have cried <laughs> Wait, two people <laughs> cried? What? Yes, we oh. have made multiple people cry with this. One of the times I think was in good faith. The other time I feel kind of bad about, but um, that's Wait, just another example so of cry. <laughs> we were like, we were kind of mean. Oh. So our See, stage one of our psych- our off mic is slowly kind of curling into a ball because we kind of were mean, <laughs> not mean, but very. Oh. We picked a hard one. Yes. We'll we... have to play that on the podcast sometime. Yes. Oh, that would oh, be fun. Oh, that's going to be very much. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think that's just another really good example. Almost all of my, actually, I think every single one of my friends here is in Creative Filming Club in some form or, or another. And I just know my entire college experience would be different. It would be so different if I hadn't found Creative Filming Club. Yeah, honestly, like I did not make any friends until I joined CFC and I think that was one of um Elise's goals our founder she not only wanted to like I don't know make films with people she all she also wanted to like create memories with them and like you know strengthen friendships and create new ones as well it's not just filming you know yeah speaking of club bonding a really good way to get to know people is to shoot for 12 hours straight with them for multiple weekends in a row like we do with what our friends for Because we just had so much footage to get, honestly. We would be there for hours and hours and hours. Um, And then sometime around 3 a.m., mostly every night, just strange things would happen. Like, I'd look over and suddenly Sour Patch Kids are on fire and I'm not really sure what to do. But Yeah, like, that was, oh my god, there's a lot of weird moments going on, like, in the middle of the night. But I think one of the main things that we definitely learned as a club is how to use equipment. Um, like you would definitely learn a lot more just being on set than having to be sitting in a classroom. Like I wouldn't have like learned a lot about like lighting until like having to deal with all the issues in our, in my apartment, having to film in my apartment because it was such a small space. Yeah. What our friends for is really unique, at least in my opinion, because it's all set in one room and that's really cool from a cinema point of view, but it's also really not cool when you have three giant LED lights that you have to keep out of your frame while at the same point trying to set up your three-point lighting system to eliminate your shadows, unless when you want shadows, of course. Um, So we all learned a lot about where to place light strategically to make different things happen, and that was definitely one of the biggest learning experiences for me during this whole thing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, do you... Okay. Well, yeah. Also, like, Sam, me, and, like, a bunch of other people, like... When you take on a role, it's you're not just going to take on that one role. You're definitely going to learn about a lot of other things. Like, for example, if I said, oh, I want to just do sound. Since we're not, like, a big club, um, we're slowly gaining a lot of members. But, like, whenever we're on set, there's always something that's like, we need help on. So even if you do choose sound, you're going to have to, like, 
help out with lighting or like I don't know be script soup or be camera assistant like you get to dabble into a lot of things on set yeah there was many a time around 3 4 a.m when someone would go oh who wants to hold the boom pole this time there would just be this collective groan of everyone that's asleep on the floor yeah it is (laughs) because we're all exhausted i was happy to take my leave at 12 a.m each day (laughs) yeah yeah. it was so funny like we have our fearless producer of what our friends for yeah it's not fearless very full of fear (laughs) (laughs) but i was gonna say like uh i think we can if we ever do a production like this we have a better shot list you know we can get the lights like in one's position and then we can shoot everything from that one position oh there was this magical day where we had all of the lighting planned out beforehand and we got about 12 shots magically that were planned out with lighting and then we just crashed and burnt again but you know it was okay because we figured it out yeah this was definitely one of the largest or it is the largest project cfc has ever done and i'm very proud of our club to do that and i just can't wait to have more short films or even like long films probably not too long like this but this one's right on the verge of being feature length right it is very close to the verge of being feature length actually with sundance film festival which is the the honestly the film festival in the united states at least um the way that that works is anything up to 49 minutes is a short film and anything over 49 minutes is a feature film and it's really interesting to look at the regulations between the two because when you have a short film your stuff can be on YouTube, you can have as many premieres as you want, you can sell tickets and screen this to people, but with a feature-length film, everything's a lot more strict. You sort of have to keep it under wraps until you submit it to Sundance in case they select it. So we're probably going to aim for 49 minutes and 59 seconds or so for what our friend's for, just to make sure that we can get into that short film category instead of the feature film, so we can get it out to you guys, get it online, get people talking. Speaking of premieres, um, we plan to premiere our what are friends for film on april 14th at holmes hall shameless advertising just saying um for those who will go to uk um we are going to be filming during the filming sorry we're going to be showing it during that time on top of that we're also going to show the behind the scenes footage as well as blooper reel and then um we're going to also have a film discussion right after that in like in the art studio in the art studio as well yeah yeah, Holmes Hall is a really cool facility. As a peer mentor in the Creative Arts Living Learning Program, I get access to that, so it's really awesome. There's a huge dance studio, there are a few writing studios, music rooms, giant art studio, so I can just sort of go down there anytime, be really creative, and we are going to be able to use that space for this screening of what our friends for, so it'll be really awesome. All right, so it's about time we wrapped up, and it's time for the question of the week. What's your guys' favorite movie currently? My favorite movie currently and always is Back to the Future because Michael J. Fox is amazing. I have never actually finished Back to the Future. You have never seen Back to the oh, Future, God. Adam. Next I've seen about night. half of it, Dude, and then I always just stop. That's a story Back to the itself. Future is amazing. <laughs> they shot it. Back to the Future and Back to the Future 2 at the same time. How incredible is that? Literally, Back to the Future is the most brilliant piece of cinema ever made. I should watch them at the same time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You gotta watch them all one, two, three, but three sort of doesn't exist. It sort of exists sometimes, but other I'm times... I'm just talking, just... like, two screens right next to each other going at the same time. It'd be great. See, that's not the mm-hmm. same, though. I'd say my favorite movie, um, it's something I watched, like, earlier in the semester. It's a movie called Her. It's a really pretty, um, movie about this guy who, like, slowly falls in love with a computer, and it really shows, like, I guess, like, it's a little bit futuristic in a way. Um, I can't really give too much about it, give away too much about it, but it's it's really pretty. That's all I can say right now. Yeah. I mean, it's been out for a while. You it's can been out for a while? Go, it's been at yeah. least... You, so, I mean, like, the general premise is he, like, li- loves his phone, right? Um, kind of, like... Or he falls in love with, like, an he, AI or he something. He falls in love with an AI. He, bought, he buys this, like, computer program, and she's kind of like a Siri, but more... Um, has like better artificial te- intelligence so you can actually create like a relationship with that with that ai and he eventually i don't know just got a bit too saucy with her so i just put it that way <laughs> it's very entertaining and kind of weird but it's interesting how like in the future it can actually happen like that if you think about it you know vr is coming out every day now so yeah i'm already in love with several fictional characters we're married they are not aware of that but it's One, day. One day. One mm-hmm. day. All right. Well, I guess it's time to wrap up. I'm Adam. I'm Max. And I'm Sam. And I'd like to give a shout out to our offstage help, Adam Smith and Emmy Cashman. 
We'll see you next week.